By the end of this video, you're gonna know how to make this e-commerce website step-by-step -step with no steps skipped. And as we can see, it's absolutely beautiful. I took inspiration from Nike, Allbirds, Lululemon, and Apple. Not this garbage. What is this? This makes me absolutely wanna throw up. Don't ever make a website look like this, and don't ever make a website look like this. This is just crap, to be honest. We wanna make something look great like this, instead of garbage like this. Let's take a look at Nike. In Nike, we see this logo up here, the menu, and this cart icon. In Apple, logo up here, menu, and cart icon. Our website, logo up here, menu, cart icon. On this website, we have logo over here, if that's even a logo. Menu right here, and where's the cart icon? I don't know, it doesn't even exist. And don't even get me started on these colors. Just wow. And I hope that they're selling weed down here because it looks like they must have been high when they made this. All right, and I'm just messing around. I don't think this is that bad, but take a look at ours and I think it's so much better. So what do you think? I take this design over any of the other designs any day of the week for my own store. We've worked over 300 hours on creating this design and making this tutorial for you. I'm super proud and I think you'd be proud too if you had this as your store and your customers went to your website and it looked like this. And I can't wait to show you exactly how you can make this design step by step with no steps skipped. But obviously you can make any design that you want after you learn all the things that I'm gonna show you in this video. So what are we gonna learn? The first thing that we're gonna learn is how to get your website up and online. Then we're gonna put in this huge hero image right here. And we do that because on the websites like Allbirds and Nike, we see this huge hero image and we see these call to action buttons. And that's the same thing on our website. We see this huge hero image and this call to action button. Then we can see on the other websites that they have their different products on their stores and the different categories on their store. So we can go to our website and we can see the different categories here and the different featured products here. So we're gonna make your website just like these other amazing websites. And then for our header, we're gonna learn how to put in our logo, our menu, and our cart icon. So we're also gonna learn how to make this about page right here. So on this page, we're gonna learn how to put in this beautiful image right here. We're also gonna learn how to make it transparent so it's see-through for our menu. Then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna learn how to make this section right here where these words swoop in. And then we're gonna learn how to easily make all of these sections and import them directly into our website. And we can obviously change anything that we want, any of this text, any of this images, we can rearrange and change super easily in the visual builder. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to create this contact page. And again, we have this beautiful hero image and if we scroll down, it says, let's get in touch and your user can enter in their name, their email address and message and this will get sent directly to your email. Once it does that, you can begin and start a conversation with them or they can look at all of your contact info. Of course, any of this can be changed, any of this can be deleted, any of this can be rearranged. Down here, we have an interactive Google map that we can zoom in and include or not include if we want on our website. Really cool. We also have this footer at the bottom of the website. This shows up on each and every page with the menu, your logo, and your copyright. Then if we scroll up, we can see how the store works. So we can click on store, up here, we have different categories of our store. So we have plants, cactus, succulents. If you had a t-shirt store, for example, you can have men's and women's categories. We can also just click on store up here to go to the main store and we can see all of our products right here. And of course, this can be changed and rearranged however you want it. And you can put things on sale. You can display the ratings and you can obviously add products to your store, delete products to your store, control it however you want. Your user can also scroll down and click on a product. And here is where it displays a product. So we can zoom in on the product and look at it. We have this beautiful photo gallery right here that slides. We can have a whole bunch of pictures right here if we want to. And let's say we wanna buy this plant so we can add it to cart. And your user can see it up here and we can view our cart. And we can see the product right here and we can check out. So all they have to do is enter in all of their information right here, then enter in their credit card information and press place order. Then that money will get sent directly to you and you'll get an email letting you know that they've created an order. 
So it's super, super important that your website works on all tablet and mobile devices, which it's going to. And this is because over 50% or more of your visitors are gonna be coming from their mobile devices like their phones. So we made sure that this website is gonna work great everywhere. And you're gonna learn how to make your website look great on any device from your mobile phone to a huge flat screen TV. And you're also gonna learn how to do the same for your website. I'm also gonna show you how to manage all of your products in order so that you're in control of your website. So let's learn how to do all of this step by step. So basically, we're gonna learn four things. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get your website name. Your website name is like yourwebsite.com. So Facebook's website name is facebook.com. Google's website name is google.com. And my website name is tyler.com. You need something for someone to type in order to go to your website. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get hosting. Hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that holds all of your website information. So like all of your text and all of your images. If you had only a website name but no hosting, your website would come up blank. The third thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, which is just a fancy way of saying it helps you manage all of your website content. So you don't have to know any HTML or CSS or any confusing coding. It does all of that for you in a visual way. WordPress is by far the most popular way in the entire world to make a website. It's used by people like CNN, Forbes, Jay-Z, and Katy Perry. The fourth thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create your e-commerce website. So instead of paying thousands and thousands of dollars to have a developer create your site, you're gonna do it all yourself using this tutorial. It's gonna be super easy and super fun. So only parts one and two cost any money. So getting your website name, that costs approximately $15 per year. Getting hosting costs approximately $10 per month but I'm gonna show you how to get a super great discount on both of these. And then installing WordPress. WordPress is awesome because it's free and creating it yourself using this tutorial is also going to be free. All right, so in total, if we add up everything with a discount, it's gonna be $30 per year, which I think is an awesome deal to have your website spread out to the entire world. All right, so if you're ready, then I'm ready. So let's begin creating your website. All right, so luckily we can get your website name and hosting at the same place. So let's go ahead and open up a browser and let's type in hostgator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com and press enter. All right, so I've been using Hostgator for 16 years now. I really liked them. It was the first hosting company that I recommended and I'm still with them. I do get commission for telling people about Hostgator, so I really appreciate you using Hostgator. There are thousands and thousands of hosting companies to choose from and obviously I haven't tried all of them, but I really like Hostgator because of their 24 seven, 365 live chat and phone support. And I also really like them because they have really great pricing. So we have all of these different options, hosting, pro hosting, essentials, domains, and support. We're just gonna focus on hosting. So go over hosting, and then we have three different options, shared hosting, website builder, and WordPress hosting. You would think that you would use WordPress hosting, but actually it's just way too much, and it costs a lot more than shared hosting, and you can always upgrade later. So we're gonna be going on shared hosting. So just go ahead and click on that, and then we have these three different plans here, and we can see the price of the plan. So this is 275 a month, but I have a trick. If you go up here and go to hostgator.com forward slash unlock, U-N-L-O-C-K, and press enter, we can see that the biggest discount is unlocked. And if we go down here, those three different plans are now a lot less. So now it's 257 a month. So these three different plans are the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. The business plan is just way too much and we don't need all of this. And again, we can always upgrade later. So it really is between the hatching plan and the baby plan. The difference between the hatching plan and the baby plan is the baby plan, you can have unlimited websites. So you can have like yourwebsite.com, yourmomswebsite.org, a client's website, .net. You can have as many websites as you want on the single plan. Where the hatching plan, you can only have a single website, like yourwebsite.com. But because you can always upgrade later, we're gonna start off with the hatching plan. Unless you know that you have multiple websites, then you'd start off with the baby plan. 
but we're just gonna go with the hatching plan because we're only making one website. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on buy now. And then we have two options right here, register a new domain or I already own this domain. You would choose I already own this domain if you already bought it from somewhere like godaddy.com. So you can type it in right here, I already own it.com. But because we're registering a new domain, we're just gonna click on register a new domain and we're gonna type it in right here. So we're registering learnhowtocreateawebsite.com. And over here, this is the extension. This is like the ending to your website. So most of the time it's a .com, but sometimes your main website name isn't available. So you might wanna go with the .net or the .info. If you're a nonprofit, sometimes you wanna go with the .org. If you're a really cool business, you might wanna go with the .space. All right, so now what we can do is we can scroll down here. And what this is, is they want you to add on more domain names and I really don't think that you need any more. They obviously want to make more money and have you add in the .net and the .club for $15 each a year but I really don't think it's necessary. I don't think people are going to copy your website and I just think it's a waste of money. So we're not going to check off any of these and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to get to domain privacy protection. So what is domain privacy protection? By default, when you register a new domain name, that information like your email and your phone number gets registered in a database for anyone to look up. What domain privacy protection does is it hides all of that information. So sometimes if you uncheck this, you might get some spam calls or some spam emails. But if you don't really mind and you wanna save $15 a year, then you can uncheck this. I'm trying to save the most amount of money possible, so I'm gonna uncheck it but just know that I might get a couple of spam calls or spam emails. Next, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna choose a hosting plan. We already did that, so we're choosing the hatchling plan for a single website name. Next is the billing cycle. So here's the billing cycle, and there's a little bit of strategy that goes along with this. So we wanna pay the least amount upfront, but we also wanna save the most amount in the long run. So how do we do that? So with one month, we'll be paying the least amount upfront, and with 36 months, we'll be saving the most amount in the long run. But there is a balance. And I think that balance is 12 months. Because if you look here on 12 months, we're paying $2.58 a month. And on three years, we're paying $2.57 a month. So this is going to allow us to pay the least amount upfront and save the most amount in the long run, in my opinion. And this is because the discount is only applied one time. So if you go with the month, that discount will only get applied one time. But if you go with a year, it'll get applied for the entire year. With the 12 months, your domain name becomes free also, and that's different than the one month, where the one month you'll have to pay for your domain name separately. Your domain name, again, is your website name, like www.tyler.com. So I think the 12 month has the best deal possible. Then we're gonna scroll down and create your HostGator account. So just enter in your email and put in your password, and then enter in your security pin. Then we're gonna scroll down and enter in your billing information like your first name, last name, phone number, address, city and state, I'm in California, and also your zip code. Then we're gonna scroll up and it's gonna ask you what kind of payment type, so credit card or PayPal. I'm just gonna choose credit card and enter in all of my information. Don't worry, this is not a real credit card number. And put in the CVV code and expiration date. Then we're going to scroll down and it's going to ask you if you want additional services. So right here is SSL and SSL is security for your website. Our website already comes with SSL. This is just advanced SSL and I don't think that we need it. So leave it unchecked. SiteLock Essentials. This is again, another type of security on your website. And at $36 a year, I really don't think that we need it. And we can always download something for our website to secure it that's absolutely free. For professional email, I do like Gmail, but your website already comes with email. And again, we can always upgrade at a different time. So I don't think that we need this right here. Do we want to back up our hard work for $24 a year? I think that's ridiculous. And there is something free that we can download on our website that allows you to back up. And again, it's absolutely free. Then we can scroll down here and we can see HostGator SEO tools. And this is basically, they say, going to rank you better in the search engines. 
but I don't think it's really gonna work. I don't even know what they would do. There's also free things that we can download to our website. That's what makes WordPress so great. And we can save $35 a year. So all of them I think is a no. Then it's gonna ask us to enter in our coupon code. Unlock should already be in here. If it's not, put it in and click validate. Then we can scroll down and we can review our order. So 24 seven, 365 phone, live chat and email support, instant account activation, money back guarantee, domain registration for one year, which is free. And that's because we got the hatchling at 12 months. So it all comes out to $31, which I think is an amazing deal to have your website online. Again, this may fluctuate from $30 to $40, but anywhere in there is absolutely awesome. Then we'll scroll down and click, I agree to host Gator's terms of service and click check out now. All right, congratulations, you've done the hardest part, which is just decide that you really want a website and to do something about it. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install WordPress. So anywhere it says install WordPress, just find it. Mine says it right here. We're just gonna click on it and we're gonna install WordPress. All right, so they make it super simple. It used to be difficult, but all we have to do is click on install now. And then we can choose our domain name. Don't worry about this, keep this exactly how it is. So we're gonna go over here, choose our domain name I have a whole bunch of domain names but I'm gonna choose learn how to create a website.com we're gonna make sure that this is kept blank we don't want anything in here because if you put it in then it'll install it on your website.com forward slash something instead of just your main website.com we're also gonna keep this as is this might be a different number for you but you just want to keep it as the default don't change that then we're gonna go down and change the site settings up here you just put in your business name Name. but I'm just gonna put in make a store and we're gonna be able to change this later so don't really worry about it and for site description this is just a description for your website we're gonna be able to change this later so it doesn't really matter what you put it in I'm just gonna put in learn how to make a store but don't worry about it right now we can always change it later for the admin account I like to put in my name just because I can remember it and capitalization does matter so I'm just gonna put in Tyler and then for a password, choose a password that you can remember. So I'm just gonna hide this and I'm gonna put in my password right here. All right, for admin email, you wanna change this to your main email. So I'm just gonna put in my email right there. And for choosing a language, we wanna keep it English right now, even if your language is different, just because it's gonna be much easier to follow along. And again, we can always change this later. All right, next we wanna scroll down and we wanna skip all of this because we're gonna be selecting a much better theme and we wanna email the installation details to our email address. So just put in your email address. And then once you've done that, we can click install. So right now WordPress is installing for you and it's gonna take a couple of minutes, but through the magic of editing, I'm gonna speed that process up. All right, so now it says, congratulations, the software was installed successfully and we can go to your website. So if we click on your website, will your website actually work? Let's take a look. All right, so let's check out our website and we can see that it doesn't work. We get a sad face and why is that? That's because it takes a little while, somewhere between 10 minutes and one hour for your website to spread across the entire world. Sometimes it can take up to 24 hours, but that's super rare. So I'm just gonna take a break right now. I'm gonna go for a walk and then I'm gonna check on it a little bit later. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. We're gonna check on our website, and if we click on it, we can see that our website works. We have a website, and that's super awesome. Some developers would charge you $500 just to get you here, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's super easy. Once we do that, we can close all of these tabs right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna log in to your website. So the way to log in is to go to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin, WP dash A-D-M-I-N and press enter. All right, so what we can do to log in is we can go over here and enter in your username that you made in the previous step. So I'm just gonna put in Tyler and then password that you made in the previous step. So I'm just gonna put that in right here. If you forgot your password, you can always click lost your password and it'll email it to you. Once we do that, we can click login. And now we're logged into the backend or the dashboard of your website. 
So real quick, I just wanna show you how to get to the back end and front end of your website. This is the back end, again, the dashboard of your website. That's what WordPress calls the back end. And to get to the front end of your website, all you have to do is click on your website name. And that will get you here. You know that you're logged in by having this big black bar at the top. None of your users can see this. This is just for you when you're logged in. To get back to the dashboard of your website, the back end of it, all you have to do again is click on your name and you'll be transported to the back end of your website. We're gonna be doing that a lot during this tutorial, so I just wanted to show you right there. The next thing that we're gonna do is delete plugins. What are plugins? Plugins are like little programs or apps on your website. A lot of the times, hosting companies install a whole bunch of plugins that you don't really need on your website. You see all of this mess right here? They've done that probably because it makes business sense for them or they got paid to do it, but we don't want to be a part of any of that. We're not mad at them for doing it, but we really just want to start off fresh and clean on our website. Plugins are super cool. They allow you to add different programs to your website. So for example, by default, WordPress doesn't have a contact form plugin where people can fill out information and press send and email you. So you can easily download a free plugin that adds that to your website. All right, but to delete all these plugins is super easy. All we have to do is go over to this left side and click on plugins and we can scroll down we can check off all of them right here by clicking on this button and then going up here and first we need to deactivate them so go to deactivate and then apply now all of our plugins are deactivated and now we want to delete them so go up here and then go here and go to delete and apply then press ok and now delete all of the unnecessary plugins on your website and then we can start off fresh and clean so now we can go to our dashboard and we can see it looks much much better all right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna switch the theme. The theme is the design of your website. Let me show you what it looks like. Click on your name to go to the front end of your website, and we can see that this is the theme. So again, the theme is the design of your website. This is our design right now, and we're gonna make it so much better. All right, so to change the theme or the design of your website, all we have to do is go back into the back end, and then go to Appearance and Themes. Once we're here, we wanna add a new theme, so just click on add new and we're going to be adding a theme called Astra. So go over here and type in A-S-T-R-A -A and press enter to search. And we can see this theme right here. We can click on details in preview and we can see that it's been rated 5,000 times, five out of five stars, and it has over a million downloads. This is the best and most flexible theme out there. So all you have to do to install it is click install. Once we do that, we're gonna click on activate to activate the theme. All right, now that it's activated, we can go to the front end of our website and we can see that the website has changed. It doesn't look that much better, but this theme is gonna allow us to create any website that we can think of. All right, but this theme right now isn't looking that much better from the original WordPress theme. So why did we install it? We installed it because we can install pre-made websites on this theme. So in order to do that, all we have to do is go to the back end, and then we go to plugins because we need a new plugin, and then we go to add new. This plugin is called Starter Site. So just start typing starter, and sites, S-I-T-E-S, -E and press enter. And we can see it right here. It has five out of five stars with 1 million active installations. And we can go ahead and click install now to install that to our WordPress website. Then we can click on activate and it'll activate. And now when we go to appearance, we can see this new menu options, starter templates. So just go ahead and click on that. And then we can click on build your website now. And then we have all of these different options right here, but this is the best visual page builder by far. So just click on Elementor. Once we do that, we can click on e-commerce, and we can install any of these stores in just one click. And many of the best ones are free. And I think that's super awesome. For this tutorial, we're installing Simply Natural because it's one of the best ones to start off with. And you can make any design you want by modifying it just like we're gonna show you in this video. So let's go ahead and click on it. And we can see what this template looks like by scrolling with the preview right here. And we can obviously do this for any of the templates. But I really recommend starting off with the Simply Natural template it because it's the one we're using in this tutorial and all the steps will be the same. And here it's going to ask us to 
put in our logo, but we're gonna do this later, so let's just skip and continue. Then it allows us to choose between some default colors for our theme like this, which changes the colors here. But we're gonna go with the default colors and put in our own colors manually later. So let's just go with default and click continue. Then it's gonna allow us to customize our fonts on our website. You can pick any of these fonts that you like, like Playfair Display, or maybe we like Montserrat. And as you can see, that changes all of the fonts over here. But I like Poppins the best. So let's just click continue. Then we can skip all of this and just click submit and build my website. And that's gonna import the entire template into your website, saving you hours and hours of work. Now through the magic of editing, I'm gonna speed this up, but it's gonna take a little while. And now congrats, your website has imported successfully. We can now click view your website up here and we can see what our website looks like. And as we can see, our website looks much, much better. It imported all these products and this entire homepage and all of these pages up here and it got our shopping cart working. And it also added a whole bunch of plugins. So if we go into our backend, by clicking on our name and then going down and clicking on plugins, we can see it added all of these extra plugins, which again are like apps for our website. All right, so we installed starter templates ourselves. That gave us the ability to import that website. What Elementor does is it's a visual designer, so it allows you to visually design your website. What WooCommerce is, is that allows us the shopping cart capabilities so we can do things like take payments and have products on our website. We don't need to know what this is. We're not gonna be using it for this tutorial. And for WP Forms Lite, that's the plugin that allows us to have a contact form on our contact page where people can fill it out and press send and it'll send to your email. Because we're not gonna be using this one right here, we're gonna go ahead and deactivate it. And then we can scroll down and we can press delete to delete that plugin. We can always install it later if we want to, but we don't need it right now. If you're ever worried about what some words or terminology mean, don't worry, we're gonna be doing it all step by step. All right, so we can close this up here. We don't need this extra tab. And now we're gonna delete the extra content that we don't need that WordPress and the starter sites have installed. So if we go over to posts right here, and click on it. These are blog posts that we don't need on our website, so go ahead and click on trash, and then go to the trash and we can delete permanently. So hover over it and press delete permanently. Once we've done that, we can go to pages. So our starter plugin put in a whole bunch of pages that we don't need and some that we do need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete all the ones that we don't need. So we're gonna select all of them right here and we're gonna deselect the ones that we're gonna keep. So unselect about us, unselect cart, cart page. Then we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna unselect this checkout page right here. Then unselect contact us, then unselect the home right below it. And finally we can scroll down and we can unselect this shop page right here. And that's all of them. All of them that are selected are gonna be moved to trash and the one that's unselected, it's gonna be kept. So we can scroll up and from this drop down right here, we can move to trash and apply. Once we do that, we can click on trash and we can select all of them and go from the drop down and delete permanently and apply. All right, now we can press all and we can see all of the remaining pages we had and none of them are duplicates. Some of them from previously that we deleted were duplicates, so we got rid of all of those. And we're also gonna come back and design each of these pages later on. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the general settings of your website. So if we go to settings and then general, this is where you can change your site title, which is usually your business name and your tagline, which is what explains your website. So if we open up a new tab right here and we go to our website and we hover over it, we can see it says make a store, learn how to make a store. And that corresponds with this, make a store, learn how to make a store. This is what's also gonna show up in the search engines and you can always change and update it later. Next is this section right here, which we don't wanna touch at all. This will break your website if you change it, so don't change it. Then we can update our email right here. This should be your email address. And if we scroll down, we can change the language right here if we want. And we can also change the date format. Then we can scroll down and we can save changes. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change some of our global colors. So let's 
exit out of here. And the way that we do that is we go to appearance and then customize and we click on global. So click on global up here. And here we can change all of the typography, colors, container and buttons for our entire website. The typography is like the font. So if we go here and we scroll down a little bit, pay attention to this font right here. This is the body font. If we go up here and we change it to poor story, we can see that that font changed and it changed in different areas of our website. It also changed up here in the menu. And obviously that typography looks pretty bad. So we're gonna change it back to a Poppins but that's how you be able to control your font. You can also change the fonts for your headings like up here, and you can do that below right down here. But we're not gonna change any of the fonts, so we're just gonna go back, but that is how you would change your fonts. We can also change the colors of our website. So all we have to do is click on colors, and here we have our main colors. We're gonna be changing two of the colors. So we're gonna click on the first color, and we'd be able to change it to any color that we want. So we can go like this, and we can see that this color has changed right here. So we have a specific color called a hex value that we wanna put in here, and that color is is 1F513F. And we can see it changed to a darker green right here. And for the second color, we're just gonna click on it and we're gonna go up here and we can see this menu text right here. And we're gonna change that color to 51A007. So that's gonna change to that green color and we can just click off of it. And now we can see that it's changed to this green color. Super cool. It also changed the cart color up here and it's looking awesome. And if we ever wanna reset the button color, all we have to do is click on this color right here and press reset. And now reset it back to the default color. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the buttons on our website. So we can go up here and press back and go to buttons. Before that, let me explain container real quick. So the container is how wide your website is and we don't need to mess with that right here. I just wanted to explain it. So for the buttons, all we have to do is click on it and we can change the button color right here. All right, so right now we can't see the button. So what we can do is we can click on plants up here and then we can click on any product. I'm just gonna click on the first one and we can see this button right here. It has this color and it has a radius, which is the rounded part of the button. So right now it's 50, which makes it super round and we're gonna change it to five so it's not as round. So we're just gonna put in five and we can see that now the button isn't as round. Next, we're gonna change the color of this button. So we can go right here and click on it and we can choose any of these buttons if we want. And it's not updating right now because we actually have to publish it. But what we can do is we can put in our own color. So we're just gonna put in 75C32C and that's gonna change it to a lighter green. This dark green on hover is perfect. So now that we've done that, all we have to do is click on publish and we're gonna exit out of here. Then we can go to the front end of our website, click on plants. But before that, we can see that this color has changed. This button color has changed to what we put in. And at the bottom, it's changed right here. And we can scroll back up and we can go to plants. We can click on a product and we can see this button has changed. So that's how you control the colors of your buttons. And what we can do to see that change is we can click add to cart and we can hover over our cart and we can see some of those colors changed. And we can also view our cart and we can see all of those colors that updated. Super cool. All right, now's the fun part, which is the design of your website. And that's what we're doing next. If we check out nike.com, we can see that this page is designed really nicely. It's not just a list of their products. We can see this huge hero image right here with this shop button so that you can shop and we can scroll down and we can see products on the homepage. We're also gonna do the same thing. If we look at allbirds.com, we see the same thing, a huge hero image with a shop button. And if we scroll down, we also see products on their homepage. So how do we achieve a similar and amazing designs like this? Well, it's super easy. All we have to do is go to our homepage by clicking on your business name. And what we wanna do is we wanna design this homepage. We already have that huge hero image and that shop now button. 
and we already have some products on here. So it's already looking really good, but we wanna make it our own and we wanna learn how to actually design this. So to edit your page, all you'd have to do is click on edit with Elementor. Sometimes this doesn't show up though. So I'm gonna show you how to go back into the dashboard, which you click on this. And then we can click pages. And then we have all of our pages right here, like our home and about. And all we have to do is hover over it and we can see edit with Elementor. So that's what we're gonna do. We can also click on the home page and click edit with Elementor. So we can edit everything except for the very top of the website, which is called the header and the very bottom of the website, which is called the footer. Later, we're gonna be able to edit all of that, but right now, this is just the inner page that we're editing. So basically the concept is anything that you click on the right side right here, you can edit on the left side. So we can click on this button on the right side and edit it on the left side. We can click on this text on the right side and edit it on the left side. So your entire website is made of sections and columns. This is an entire section right here. If we scroll down, we can see that this is another section. You can see by the blue border around it. Within this section, there are three different columns. So here's a column, here's a column, and here's a column. You know it's a column by this little icon right here. We can also scroll down. We see this is an entire section. And within this section, there are three columns. So this column, this column, and this column. And within these columns, there's text and images and buttons and anything that you want to put within it. We can more easily visualize this by clicking on this navigator right here. And we can also pin it to the right by just click, hold, and drag it to the right and letting it go. So basically, we have all of these different sections and we can click on any of them. And within these sections, we have different columns. And within all of these columns, we have different elements. And that's why it's called Elementor. So we see this column right here, it's the first one. And within it, we have this image box. And we also have this button right here. We can add any more elements if we want to by clicking on this. And we have all of these different elements that we can just click, hold, and drag right into our website to add things to our website. In order to add different sections, we can scroll all the way down here and we can press plus to add different sections. But I'm gonna show you how to do that later. We're not gonna do that right now. Right now, we're just gonna edit our website. All right, so this is super easy once we get started. I know it might look overwhelming, but we're gonna learn all of this by doing it step by step. All right, the first thing that we're gonna learn is how to change the homepage image. So let's do that. To do that, all we have to do is hover over this entire section and click on this section. We're trying to change this image right here. Once we click on the entire section, we have these three different columns, layout, style, and advanced. We wanna to go to style. Once we go to style, it's super easy to change the image. All you have to do is click on it. And what we can do is we can upload our own files by clicking on upload files. You can find copyright free images from places like pixabay.com, P-I-X-A, bay.com and these are copyright free images that you can download on your website. We can also go to pexels.com, p e x e l s.com, which is another place to get free copyright pictures and videos. And another place that we can go is unsplash.com, u n s p l a s h.com and press enter and we have all of these free images that we can download. And all you have to do is click on them and download them. So we can do it that way or we have this free images tab right here that we can click on and this is Pixabay. So we can search for something like T-I-T-L-I-S and we can see this image right here and we can click on it. And all we'd have to do to insert it into our website is click insert media. We're not gonna do that right now because I've prepared all of the files for you. So we can go to upload files and what you can do is download the zip file from the description below. So I'm just gonna minimize this right now. And this is the file that you download from the description below. So just go ahead and click on it and unzip it. And now we have all of those different files right here that we can see. And now we can upload all the files that I've prepared for you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on upload files, then we're gonna select files, and then we're gonna go to our desktop, hopefully where we've downloaded it, and go to Make a Shop 2021. And then we're gonna go and click on the home page, and we're gonna go to Home Header Hero, and we're gonna press open. Then the file is gonna upload, and we're gonna insert media. 
and that's gonna insert it right into our website, super easy. Right now, you might be tempted to put in all of your own content and your own images and your own text, but I think you should just learn how to do it first, and then later you can put in your own content. The next thing that we wanna do is change the position of this image. It's way too focused on the center, so all we have to do is go here and go to top center and just click on it and that will make it so that we can see the sky much better. The next thing that we wanna do is get rid of these rounded edges right here. So we can scroll down and go to border and for border radius, let's put in zero here and zero here and that will get rid of the roundness. And don't worry if a lot of this doesn't make sense, it'll make sense in a little while. Next, this image is a little bit too bright, so we're gonna make it less bright. So what we can do is click on background overlay, and then we want this background overlay to be classic, so just click on classic. And then we wanna turn this opacity, which is how see-through it is, all the way down to 0.2, and now we can see through it more. But we wanna change the color of this to black, so it's much darker, but we can change any color that we want right here but I'm gonna make it black and that's gonna make the text that's white pop out eventually. And next, we're gonna change the height of this image and make it a little bit taller. So we wanna go to layout and we want it to be PX instead of VH. So go to PX and change this to 615 and that will make it much taller and look much better. All right, so now to update changes, all you have to do is click on update. All right, so we're all done learning how to change the image on your homepage. Let's mark that off. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the homepage text. So how do we do that? So what we wanna do is we wanna delete this and make this text white and center this text in the middle. So to delete this right here, all we have to do is right click on this right here and press delete. And that'll delete this. Now we wanna change this text to white. All we have to do is click on it and then go to style and then go to text color and make this color white. Then we wanna center this text right here. So to center it, all you have to do is go to content and then under alignment, we make it centered. But we can see that it's not actually centered in this picture right here and that's because there's way too much space on this side. So to change the spacing on this side, all we have to do is click on this column right here and then go to advanced and where it says margin, which is just another name for spacing, on the right, we want it to be zero. And now that's gonna make it centered because there's no right spacing right here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this text. So all you have to do is highlight it. And I'm just gonna caps lock it. So it's all capital. And I'm gonna type in explore nature. And then what we wanna do is we wanna change this font and the size of the font. So we can go to style up here. And then under typography, you can click on it. And then we're gonna search for B-E, B-A-S, Babus Nuo. Just go ahead and click on it. And then for the size, we wanna do PX or pixels. I'm gonna drag this to 90. All right, that's looking super good. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the letter spacing and we're gonna change the letter spacing to three so that it's more spread out. That's looking awesome. All right, so we're all done with learning how to change the text. We can check that off. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to edit or add a button. So let's learn how to do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna make this button in the center, remove some space, make the button see-through, and link it to our, our shop page. So it's super easy, let's do it. We can click on this edit icon right here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this space. So go ahead to advanced and we see the margin and we're just gonna make it zero to remove that space. Then what we can do is we can center it. So we wanna go to content and then go to alignment and make it in the center. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this see-through. So we can go to style and then under background type, we're gonna keep it as classic and under color, we're gonna change this so that it's see-through. So we can drag this all the way to the left and we can see that it's now see-through. But now we want a border around it. So what we can do is we can go to border type and we can click on solid. We're not seeing it yet because it doesn't have any width. So we're gonna make the width two and that's gonna add the border all the way around it. Then we're gonna change the color of the border so we can go ahead and click on it and drag it to white. And we want this border to be a little bit more rounded. So under radius, we can type in 19 right here and that's gonna make it round. The last thing that we need to do is we wanna make this text bigger and link it 
to our shop page. So we can go over here and we can go to style and under typography, we can click on it. And then for size, we want it to be 14. So it's a little bit bigger. And then we can go to content and for link, all we have to do is press slash shop. And that's gonna link it to our website.com forward slash shop and that's gonna link to our shop. The button looks amazing. What might make it look even better is a little arrow. So we can do that over here under icon. We can click on this icon library and we can type in long arrow and we can see this long arrow and we can click on it and we can press insert and now insert it right there. We want it to show after the shop now so we can under icon position, just click on after and now our button is perfect. All right, so let's go to our checklist. We're all done learning how to edit a button. The next thing that we're gonna learn is how to edit and move a homepage section. So we're gonna scroll down a little bit and we're gonna edit this section right here. We're gonna change a couple of things and we're gonna move this to the bottom. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this plant collections. And then over here on the left side, we're gonna type in premium quality. And under the description, we're gonna type in best value for the money. Under free shipping, we're gonna go ahead and click on it and we're gonna change this to all orders above $50 in the USA. And then what we wanna do is we wanna change this shipping icon right here. So we can go ahead and click on it and let's search for shipping and click on the icon and that icon will change, super cool. The last thing that we wanna do is just click, hold and drag and we want to scroll down to the bottom or right above right here and let it go. And that will move the entire section. And that's how we edit and move a homepage section. So we can go ahead and mark that off right here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our product categories. So we can click on our homepage and what we first wanna make sure that we do is update. So we're gonna update and save all of our changes. And then we can scroll up and we wanna change this area right here. We want a little bit more space and we want to change the color of this. So how do we do that? We can click on the entire section right here and then we could go to advanced and under padding, we want it to be 100 at the top, which is going to give it more space and 100 at the bottom, which will give us 100 pixels of space here. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change this link so that it goes to your category page. We want this link to go to our plant page. So we're going to open up a new tab right here and we're going to go to our website and we want to click on plants and then we want to copy this URL right here. So we're going to copy it and this is how you make a link to any other page. Then we'll go to your home page again and then make sure this is clicked and then under link, we can paste in that link right here. And now that will link to your plants page or whatever category you have. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this color. So we can go to style and then under text color, we're gonna change it right here and we're gonna change it to FC5F5F. And that's gonna give it a really cool color. Then we're gonna also change the hover color. So when you hover over it, it's a different color. So we click on hover and we'll change this color to E60000. And that's that exact color right there. And now a really cool thing that we can do is we don't have to make changes for all of this. We can just right click right here and press copy and then go here and right click and press paste style. And that will paste the style for that and paste the style for that. And now all of those settings are copied over. We also need to change this to link to our cactus page. So we can click on it and then we can go up here and we can click on cactus. Once we do that, we can go over here and copy it. So just right click and press copy and then go back to our homepage and under link, we can paste it. And for the third and final section, we just want this to be our shop page. So we can click on it. And again, we can do forward slash shop. And that will take us to our website.com forward slash shop. All right, we're all done with that. Now we can go back to our task list and we can mark that off. The next thing that we're gonna do is delete sections or save sections for later. So we can exit out of here and go back to the home page. So let's see what we don't need. So let's scroll down. And I think that we don't need this section right here. So all you have to do is hover over this and press this X and it'll delete it. And maybe we don't need this section right here, but I actually really like it. So I think we can save this one for later. So we're gonna delete it from our home page, but we're gonna use it at a later time. So all you have to do is click on this and right click and press save as template. So we're gonna save this for later and you should too. 
So name it testimonials and press save. And that's gonna save to our library. Now we always have that section, but we don't want it on our homepage. So we're gonna exit out of here and we're gonna exit out of it. So that will delete that. And this bottom section right here, I don't really like it. So we're gonna delete this one also. So we're gonna press X and we're gonna delete it. But right now it's looking a little bit blank and empty. So maybe we'll add something later, but for right now that looks super good. So let's update that and let's go back to our checklist and we can mark that off. The next thing that we're gonna learn how to do is we're gonna learn how to make this website mobile friendly. So how do we do that? So it's super important to make your website mobile and tablet friendly because over 50% of people are gonna be coming from those devices. So all we have to do is click on this responsive mode right down here. And now we have these three tabs. So we can click on the tablet first, and now we wanna change this. So we wanna make this one centered, so all we have to do is click on this column right here, and then go to advanced, and under margin, we don't want all this space to the right, so we're gonna press zero, and that's gonna look super good. Next, we're gonna change this height right here. We want it to be a little bit taller. So just click on the entire section, and then under minimum height, we can click on PX, and we can put in 400 right here. And the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna change this radius right here. We don't want it to be rounded, so all we have to do is go to Style, scroll down and go to Border, and remove this by pressing zero and zero. And now that is looking super good. All right, next we're gonna scroll down to see what other changes we want, and this is looking good. This has a little bit too much space right here, so we're gonna click on this entire section, go to Advanced, for bottom, we wanna change this to 40 instead of 80 to give it a little bit less space. And that is looking super, super good. And we can go ahead and update that. And the feature plants are gonna show right here, but they're just not showing because we're editing our website. All right, if we go back to our checklist, we have made it mobile friendly for our tablet. Super awesome. The next thing that we're gonna do, and super important, is we're gonna make it mobile friendly for our phones. So all we have to do is go to the homepage, and then what we can do is we can click on this mobile icon right here, and we can scroll up, and we wanna change this. We wanna make this not as big, and this button not as big, and we wanna remove this border radius right here. We also see that this isn't centered perfectly, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on it right here, this column, and then under margin, we're gonna set that margin to zero, and that's gonna center it so that there's no space on the right. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make this text smaller, so just click on this pencil icon, go to style, and under typography, we wanna make sure it is PX, and we're gonna set that to 45 to make it not as big. Then we want this button to be a little smaller, so we're gonna click on this edit, and we're gonna go to style, and we're gonna scroll down and under padding, and this is the padding within this button, so like right here and right here. We're gonna unlink these values, and we're gonna put in 12, then click tab to go to the next field, 24, tab, 12, and 24. All right, next we're gonna remove this right here, this border radius, so what we're gonna do is click on the entire section, and then scroll down, and under border, we're gonna make it zero and zero, so it has no curve at the bottom. And then we're gonna make this image less tall, so we're gonna go to layout, and under minimum height, we're gonna do 350 pixels. All right, so we're all done with that, and the rest of the mobile website looks amazing. So we're just gonna click on update to update it, and we can go back to our checklist and check it off, and we're all done with editing the homepage. But there was one more thing that I wanted to do. So we can exit out of here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the desktop mode, and if you remember, I wanted something down here because it looks a little bit blank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this section right here by just right-clicking and press duplicate, and then we're gonna click hold and drag to this bottom section right here and let it go. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this image. So let's select the entire section and then go to style and let's click on the image. Then we're gonna go to free images. So click on free images and we're gonna search for an image. And let's just search for something like Alpine. 
All right, and we see this one. This one's super cool. So just go ahead and click on it. I hope this looks good. And insert media. And I'm gonna make sure to include this photo in the zip because I think it's looking super awesome. So you can download this image from the description below. All right, next we're gonna position it a little bit different. So I'm gonna click on this entire section and go to position. And we want it to be focused on the center, center, center. And that move the image focus to the center. Next, we're gonna make this a bit darker. So we're gonna scroll down and go to background overlay. And we're gonna set the opacity to 0.4. And that's gonna make it darker. And now we're gonna change this text to discover nature. So we're just gonna change it right here to discover. Next, we're gonna add some text right here. So we're gonna go and click on this elements. And then we're gonna drag in a text editor. So just click hold and drag it in. And let's go to style and let's make it white so that we can see it by going to color and making it white. And then under alignment, we're gonna align it to the center so that the text is in the center. And then we're gonna go to content and we're just gonna paste in some inspirational text right here. So just click on text and highlight this and right click and paste it in. All right, that's looking super awesome. Finally. Let's adjust the spacing under advanced. So click on advanced and then let's unlink the values so they're not all the same. And on the bottom and top, let's give it 20 pixels. So 20 on the top and 20 on the bottom. That looks much better spaced out. All right, so we're gonna update that and that is looking amazing. So now it works on the desktop, mobile and tablet and it already works on those because we already applied those settings. So this is what your website looks like on desktop. This is what it looks like on tablet. And this is what it looks like on mobile. And it looks super, super awesome. All right, so if we click on our desktop, you probably notice that there's one more thing that we didn't edit here and that is our products. And our products would show up right here if we weren't editing our website right now. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, so let's open up a new tab and let's go to our homepage. And if we scroll down, we can see the different featured products here. And whenever we make a new featured product, it'll get inserted right here if we have the right short code on our website. So let's go check out what that looks like. So if we click on edit with Elementor, all we have to do is click here because this is where that short code lives and we can see it over here. So this may look hard and confusing, but it's not at all, it's super easy. All it's saying is product limit equals eight. That's how many products there are. So we can change this to six and then six products will show up instead of eight. So now we can see instead of eight, it has six. We can also change the columns to three. So it will be three columns instead of four. And now that shows up just like this. We're not gonna have the button right here. And that's because Elementor shows it a little bit different than it's gonna actually look like on our website. We can also do different things in the short code, like we can add something after this featured and we can put in category. So just type in category equals, and maybe we only want the plant category. So we do quote and we do plants. And that's only gonna show us our plants. We can also change it to cactus. So we can just type in cactus and now only show our cactus. And because we only have three, it's only gonna show three. So that's how you put in different types of products on your homepage. And that's how you show only a certain amount of products and only a certain amount of columns. All right, so we're all done with that. We can update that and we can go to our store and we can see right now it has four columns and eight products, but if we refresh, and we can see that it's only showing our three cacti, but if we go back and we remove the category cactus, it'll show all of the categories, and we press update, and if we refresh, now it'll show all of our categories and it'll show six products. That is looking really awesome. So there are many, many things that we can do with this WooCommerce product shortcode. And you can just simply Google WooCommerce product shortcode and you'll find all of the documentation that you need, but we're gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna stick to this, but we are gonna learn more about it in a little while. All right, so we can close this and make sure that it's updated. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new page that has our deals on it. So let's just go back to our homepage by removing all of that 
and pressing enter. And now we're gonna make a new deals page up here. But why are we making a deals page? We're making a deals page for two different reasons. First, we wanna learn how to make a new page. And that's because maybe you want a services page up here or an FAQ page up here. So we wanna learn how to make a new page. And we also wanna learn how to add any of your products to any page on your website. So those are the two reasons that we're making a deals page. So let's go ahead and create it. We're making this deals page after this page. So we're basically just gonna copy this page and not reinvent the wheel and use this as a starting point. So let's go ahead and edit this homepage with Elementor by clicking on it up here. And we're gonna save this as a template. So click down here and press save as template. And we can call this home and press save. All right, once it's saved, we can exit out of there and we can go to the back end of our website by just going to ourwebsite.com forward slash WP admin and removing all of that. Then to create a new deals page, we go to pages and we click add new. And then we're gonna call this deals, D-E-A-L-S. And we're gonna click on publish and click publish again. Then we're gonna click edit with Elementor. All right, next we're gonna import that home page by clicking on this folder and then going to my templates. And then over home, we can click on insert and then press yes. And now that's gonna import the entire deals page into our website. All right, so we can go ahead and preview this by clicking on this I. And this, even though it looks like our homepage is actually our deals page. Now we can see it has a problem because the header is not transparent. It's not see-through and we want it to be see-through. So how do we do that? Let's go back and let's update this page right here. So just press update and that'll save all the changes. And then we wanna go back one time. So let's go back one time. And now we can go over here to the Astra settings and click on it. And then we can scroll down and where it says transparent header, we wanna enable it. And then we can press update. And now we can go back to our deals page and we can refresh and that header should be transparent. It should be see-through and there it is. Now that looks much better. Now we can exit out of here and we can edit our deals page with Elementor again. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove everything that we don't need. So we don't need this shop now button. So I'm just gonna click on it, right click and press delete. And then we're gonna scroll down and we don't need this section right here. So we're just gonna exit out of this one. And then we don't need these two headings right here. So we're just gonna right click on this and press delete and right click on this and press delete. The next thing that we're gonna do is change the heading to latest deals. So let's just type it right here. And then we want this to be smaller right here. So we're gonna click on the entire section and then change this to 350 pixels. So 350 and that will give it less height. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this image right here. So we're gonna go to style and we're gonna click on the image and we're gonna upload files and select files. You can find all of these images in the description below. So we're just going to look for it and go to the deals page and click on deals header hero image and press open. Then we're gonna click insert media, but I don't like how this is positioned. So I wanna position the image for center center. And that looks much better, but it's not perfect. This doesn't look centered to me. So we wanna click on the entire section again and go to advanced. And we wanna change the top and bottom padding to 30. So press 30 and the bottom 30. And that looks centered to me. All right, next, if we scroll down, we can't see it right now, but this isn't aligned perfectly either. So we wanna click on this entire section and then go to advanced. And it just has too much space up here. So we wanna go for the top padding to be 40 and the bottom padding to also be 40. And now if we hover over this short code area, we can see the space is smaller at the top there and at the bottom right there. So now it looks perfect. All right, so now let's update this page by clicking on update and let's preview it by clicking on the eye. And this page is looking really, really awesome. It looks super good but we only wanna show the latest deals or the things that are on sale. So we have a couple of these products that are not on sale that are just featured, but we wanna change this short code so that it only shows things that are on sale. All right, so to do that, we go over and click Elementor and then we click on our short code, which is right here. And then instead of visibility equals featured, we wanna change that right here and delete it and do on and then underscore sale and equals it in quotes true. And that will make it so it only shows products that are on sale. So let's update that 
and let's preview it. But we're gonna see that it doesn't actually work. And why is it blank? It's blank because we imported a starter site and that starter site hasn't refreshed these products yet. So we have to refresh these products manually. So in order to do that, we have to go into the back end. So just click on your dashboard and then go to WooCommerce and click on status. Then we wanna click on tools and we wanna scroll down until we see product lookup tables. And then we wanna click on regenerate, then press okay. And now we can see that the lookup tables are regenerating. So we just have to wait about a minute in order for it to regenerate and our products are gonna be refreshed. All right, so we can click on tools to see if that message is still there. And once that message disappears, it means you're ready to go to WooCommerce transients and click clear transients and then press okay. Once we do that, we know that our products are refreshed and you're never gonna have to do that again. Again, we only had to do it because we imported those products on our starter site. All right, so now let's go check out our deals page again by going to this right here and let's preview our page by clicking on the I. And now we can see our latest deals page and it has all of the products that are on sale. We only have five products that are on sale. So it would show six if we had six products. And I'm gonna show you how to create a new product on sale in just a little while. All right, so now we can close this tab up here and we can go back to Elementor. If you're looking for a specific short code but can't find the solution online, then leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help. All right, so now our deals page is done. Make sure it's updated, and now we're gonna add this to our menu. So I'm just gonna go up here and remove everything so it's just the main website, and press enter, and we can exit out of this. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna control this menu part. I'm gonna show you how to change and rearrange this menu. I'm gonna show you how to add different items to this menu, and we're gonna add our store to this menu. We're also gonna add our deals page, so we can put any page up here that we want. All right, so to do that, all we have to do is go to the back end of our website by clicking on our name. All right, and then we go to appearance, and we go to menus. Now we wanna select our primary menu. So instead of important links, go to primary menu and press select. That's our main menu for our entire website. Now we wanna scroll down and we wanna remove plants and cactus from our menu just temporarily so we can click on it. And this is how you remove any pages from your menu and just press remove. So click and remove. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna add our deals page and our shop page. So just click on deals and click on shop and add to menu. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna re-add our product categories and we don't see them right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna scroll up and go to screen options up here and then click on product categories. Then we can click on this to hide it and we can scroll down and now we see product categories here. So we can go ahead and click on it and we can add cactus and plants and add them to the menu. And now we wanna rearrange this menu. So I'm just gonna click, hold and drag shop under the homepage. And under shop, we want our different categories and our deals. So we're gonna click, hold and drag plants under shops and we're gonna indent it in order for it to be a sub menu. And then we're gonna click, hold and drag cactus the same way. And we're gonna click, hold and drag deals in the same way. And now what we wanna do is we wanna rename all of these so that it's capital because I think that's gonna look better just to have all of the menu items capital. So I'm gonna speed through this a little bit, but we're gonna capitalize home. Instead of shop, I'm gonna name it store because I think that's a cooler name and capitalize all of the rest of them. And I'm gonna rename contact us just to contact because I think it's simpler. All right, all we have to do is press save menu. And now we can go back to the front end of our website and we can see that this has changed. We can't see it that great and we're gonna change that in a second. But if we go to our store, we can see that this menu is looking much better and this sub menu is super, super cool. So it goes home, store, about, and contact. That's awesome. The next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is create your own logo and put your logo up here. So the way that you can do that is you can open up a new tab and we can go to logomaker.com. That's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R without the E dot C-O-M and press enter. Once you do that, you can click start my design and we'll create a new design. All right, you could look for tons and tons of graphics up here, but I'm just gonna show you how to make a simple logo with text. So all you have to do is go to 
to this T right here and let's type in nature. All right, now we wanna make it a little bit bigger. So all we have to do is click on it and then drag these handlebars out and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Now we wanna change the font so we can go up here and we can scroll down and change it to Roboto. The next thing that we wanna do is make it bold. So we're gonna click here on styles and choose the B for bold. That's looking super good. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna save a couple different versions of this logo. So the first version is gonna be white. We're not gonna be able to see it, but if you click, hold, and drag it all the way to white, we can go ahead and save this version. Just click on save logo, and we're gonna go down here and download it just like that. All right, now we have that version saved. We're gonna save a different version, and this is because one will show up on our transparent header, and one's gonna show up on our regular header. It'll make more sense in just a second. So just click on this, and we can make it a green. So you can just click, hold, and drag. I have a specific color that I wanna use, so I'm just gonna paste that in there. And we're gonna save this version also. So so we're just gonna click off of it and press save and we're gonna download it. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a fave icon. So your fave icon is like this icon up here and this helps distinguish your website from other websites. We can see right now our fave icon is this WordPress symbol, but we want our own. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make an N so we can erase all of this right here. And that N is looking good, but we want to add a circle behind it. So let's go over here and add a circle. And what we can do is we can send this circle backwards. So we just right click and we send backwards. All right, and the N might be hard to select right now. So we're just gonna select it over here and then we can move it. All right, and we're gonna make this N a little bit bigger. So we're just gonna click and hold and drag it a little bit bigger and we're gonna reposition it. And you can also use your arrow keys to reposition it perfectly. All right, so that is looking really good to me. And now I'm gonna click back on the circle and I'm gonna make this white. So we can't see it right now, but we will be able to see it when it's up here. So now we're just gonna save that and that is our fave icon. So we're just gonna download it from right here. And now we have those two different logos and our fave icon. All right, so we're all done with Logo Maker. We can exit out of here and exit out of this one. And I'm just gonna drag all of those logos to my desktop. All right, now I'm gonna exit out of here. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert that logo onto our website up here. So all we have to do is click on Customize. And while we're here, we wanna make this menu white so that we can see it a lot better. And we're gonna change this logo. So all we have to do is click on Header Builder. And because this is a transparent header, we're gonna scroll down and click on transparent header. Then we can click on design up here and we can scroll down for menu color. We're gonna click on this and we're gonna make it white. And now we can see that that changed and we can see it much better. But we can see when we hover over it, it turns green and I don't like that. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna make the hover color also white. So now that looks great. But now when we go over this cart, we can see that it's green and we can't really see it. So we need to change that. So what we can do is we can scroll all the way down and we see Woo Cart icon color and we can click on it and we can make this white. And now we can see that perfectly. All right, but this looks a little too square for me. So I want it to be a little more rounded. So we can just click on this cart icon right here and we can go to design and for border radius, we want it to make it eight and that will round it much better. So down here is just like Elementor. We have different sections and then different columns. So we can actually click, hold and drag and rearrange this just how you want it. I like it to the left, so I'm gonna keep it like that. But it's super easy to add things up here or down here, which would be way up here or down here to make it exactly how you want it. All right, we also wanna make sure that this cart icon looks good on the non-transparent page. So let's click on the store and we can see that it's this color right here, but we wanna change it to be a lighter green, just like on our logo. So we're just gonna click on it right here and we're gonna paste in that green color. So 75C3. 2C and it'll become that lighter green color. All right, so now let's finally change the logo. So let's click on site title and logo and we're gonna go here and we're gonna scroll down and where it says display site title, we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna change the logo right here. So just click change logo and we're gonna upload files, select files or we can just click hold and drag them into the website. All right, then press select and we're gonna skip cropping. That's looking way too small, so we wanna go over here and go to 130 pixels, 
and that looks perfect. So now this is looking perfect, but we also wanna change our home transparent logo. So just click on home. And then we want to go over here and we can scroll up and we have this customized transparent header text. So just click on it and then check off this right here because we're using a different logo for transparent. And then we're going to select our image and upload files and we can just drag the transparent logo into our website. Then click choose image. And now once again, it's way too small. So we want to go down here and make it 130 pixels. And that's looking awesome, except for it seems a little bit crunched up here. So we want to add a little bit of spacing. So let's click on this cog wheel over here and then go to design and under padding, we want to unlink the values. And for the top, we want to add 10. And for the bottom, we want to add 10. And to me, that's looking much better. All right, and finally, we want the site fave icon up here to be changed. So we can just scroll all the way up and click back twice, one and two, and then scroll all the way down and go to site identity. And then we can go ahead and select our site icon and upload files and drag in that icon. All right, then press select. And then we can click on skip cropping and that's gonna put in this icon up here. It looks really cool when you open up a new tab and you can see it and that looks super awesome. All right, so now we wanna publish changes to save all of our hard work and we can exit out of there. And we can see that the design is finished both on our transparent and on our non-transparent website. And we can also click on our logo to go back to our homepage. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it works on your tablet devices and your mobile devices. So all we have to do is click on customize. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on header builder, and then we're gonna click on the tablet. Then we're gonna click on the site title and logo element, and we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna uncheck display site title. We're also gonna change the logo width to 120 pixels. And don't worry, this is gonna be the white version. It's just showing up green because we're in the previewer. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this toggle button element. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll up and go to customize transparent header. And then under design, we're gonna scroll all the way down and then we're gonna make the icon and the border white. So white and not the background, but the border white. And then we're gonna select the toggle button element right here, and we're gonna make it a thicker version. So we're gonna make it right like that. And then we're gonna to go to design, and we're gonna make the border width a little bit bigger because it's too thin right now. So we're gonna make it bigger. And then we're gonna change the radius, and we want this radius to be a little bit more round, so we're gonna make it eight. And that's looking awesome. And then we're gonna set the icon size up here to 16 to make it a little bit smaller. All right, so, so far I like the spacing all around it and right here, but if we did wanna change the spacing, all we'd have to do is click on this cog wheel and then go to design and under margin, we can change the spacing right here. But I like how it is, so we're gonna move on to the mobile version. So we're just gonna click on this mobile icon, then click on the site title and logo and we can actually hide it right here so that we have more space. And then we go over here and we can scroll down and we can turn off display site title. And then for the logo width, I want it to be bigger, so I want it to be 110. All right, now we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna customize the transparent header. And we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna also make this 110 pixels. And finally, we can publish our changes and we can exit out of here. And now let's take a look what it would look like if you're on a tablet or a mobile device. And it's looking really awesome. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fix up this footer right here. We're gonna make it much simpler and look much better. So all we have to do is click on customize. Then we can click on footer builder. And now we wanna remove all of this right here cause it's just way too complex. So we're just gonna X out of all of these and that's gonna remove all of them. And the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make this one three columns. So just click on the cog wheel and under columns, we wanna make it three. And now we want this copyright to be on the right side. So just click hold and drag it to the right side. And we can go ahead and click on the copyright and I wanna align this to the right. So just scroll down and align it to the right. And right here is another short code that enters in the current year and your site title. But I want my site title to be capitalized and linked to the homepage. So all we have to do is just remove that. And I'm gonna say, make a store. Then I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna press the link button and I'm just gonna type in home and click on the homepage and that will link it to the homepage no matter what page we're on. Now there's not enough space on the right side here 
And so we're gonna go up and we're gonna click on design and we're gonna unlink these margins and we're gonna give a right margin of 40. Now we're not gonna be able to see it right here, but when we publish it, it's gonna show up. In the middle right here, we want our logo. So just click on HTML1 and we're gonna get rid of all of this text and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna align it to the center. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna add media. So just click add media. And then we're gonna use that green nature logo and we're gonna insert it into post. All right, but that's a little bit too big. So we wanna hover over it and we wanna click on this little pencil icon and we wanna center it. And then we wanna set the size to a custom size and we want the width to be 130 pixels, the same as our header logo. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to link to a custom URL and all you have to do is put in slash right here, the forward slash, and that's gonna to link to your homepage no matter what page you're on. Then we're gonna click on update and that looks much better. And the last thing that we're gonna do is we want a footer menu right here. So we can just click on this plus and then we can click footer menu. And then we can click on it and we're gonna align it to the left. And we can't see it right here because we have to configure it. So we go configure menu from here and we wanna scroll all the way down and go to footer menu and select it as the main menu because it's gonna have the same links as our main menu. All right, so that's looking awesome. Now we want a little bit more space over here. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on this little pencil icon right here. And that's the same as clicking on the footer menu. Then we're gonna click on design and let's scroll down so we can see it. So we're gonna unlink this right here and we're gonna give 15 on the right side and zero on the left side. Now all we have to do is scroll down because we want some space over here and we wanna unlink the values and give it a left margin of 40. All right, it looks messed up here, but it's gonna look great when we publish it. So let's go ahead and publish it. We're gonna exit out of there and we're gonna see it on our homepage. So we can scroll down and we can see that this menu is looking awesome. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make it sure it works on your mobile and tablet devices. So if we go like this, we're gonna see it doesn't look that great on the tablet. And if we scroll down, we're gonna see it doesn't look that great on the mobile. So we're gonna make your menu look perfect. So we can go up here and go to customize. And now we can go to footer builder once again. And let's click the cogwheel right here. And then let's click on this tablet icon and let's scroll down so that we can see it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on on this right here, the stacking one. And now for our tablet, they all stack on top of each other, but they don't look that great. All right, so now we're gonna click our footer menu and then we're gonna change the layout to inline. And then now we're gonna click on design and we're gonna unlink this and we're gonna set the top to 10. So it gives a little bit more space. And now we see that this is on the left. So we're gonna click on copyright and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna align it to the center. Again, this is only gonna affect the tablet. And we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna click on design and we're gonna set all of the margins to zero and that will center it correctly. And then we're gonna click on the HTML one, which is our logo. And then we're gonna click on design and we're gonna unlink the margin and we're gonna give the top and the bottom 35 pixels. So we have a little bit more space. All right, so we're all done with the tablet and now we're gonna switch to mobile. And we're seeing that this is not centered. So we're just gonna click on the footer menu and then go to design. And then under margin, we're just gonna put in zero and that's gonna center everything. And now if we hide this, that looks absolutely perfect. So we can go ahead and click on publish and we can exit out of there. And we're all done making our menu completely responsive. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our contact page. So just click on contact page. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this contact dash us just to contact because I think it's much better. So it'll be yourwebsite.com forward slash contact. So what we can do is we can go into the dashboard and we can go to pages and we can scroll down and we can click on contact us and we're gonna change the name just to contact. So just delete the us. We're also gonna click on this cogwheel up here and we're gonna go to permalinks right here and where it says URL slug, we just remove the dash us and then we can update that and now we can view our site. All right, now it says ourwebsite.com forward slash contact. So that looks much better. 
let's exit out of there. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to import an entirely new design into our website. So let's say we go to our website and we don't like this design right here. All we have to do is click on edit with Elementor and we're gonna get rid of all of this design by clicking on X. We're just gonna exit out of all of them and then we can click on this S right here. And if we go to free over here, we can import any of these pages in just one click, which is super awesome. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna search for contact to find a contact page. And I'm gonna find the one that I like, maybe this one. And I think it's really cool, so I'm just gonna import the template. All right, and the image is a little bit too bright here, so I'm just gonna click on it. And then I'm gonna go to style and under background overlay, I'm gonna change the opacity to zero to remove it. And that looks much better. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change the image. So just click on background and we're gonna click on an image and we're gonna upload files and we're gonna select files from the downloadable images in the description below. Then we can go to our contact page right here and click on it and open it. Then we can click on insert media and I'll insert it and that looks really good. But maybe the image is a little bit too bright so we're gonna go down to background overlay and we're gonna set the opacity to 0.2 and we're also gonna change the color to black and to me that looks much better the next thing that we can do is we can change this text and i want to caps it and just put in contact us then what we have over here is just two empty columns and we can just right click and we can delete them because we don't need them all right that looks awesome the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this photo is the exact same height and has the exact same spacing as our home page image so what we want to do is we want to select the entire section and we want to go to advanced and we're going to change it to 50 on the top and zero on the bottom and that's just like our home page now we want to go to layout and for height we want to do minimum height and we want to change this minimum height to 615 and that is looking great all right so that's it for our hero image so now we can change any of this text so let's just type in let's get in touch in all caps and we can change this one to contact info in all caps and of course we can change any of this by just clicking on it and changing any of the info right here we can also click on our social media icons and put in our social media sites right here and that was really cool we just imported a whole new design into our contact page in just a minute or two so now we can go to our google sheet and we can mark that off so mark both of those off the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a google map so let's go over here, let's scroll all the way down. We wanna add a map to the bottom. Obviously this is optional, but we wanna click on this plus and we wanna click on the single column. And then we're gonna go over here to our elements and we're gonna find our Google Maps and just click hold and drag it in there. All right, we can ignore this, we don't really need it, but we can go down here and we can change the location. Maybe I'm in Malibu, California, but if you have a business address, you can put in something more specific, like your store's address, and we can also change the zoom of it or how much it's zoomed in. Maybe I want it a little bit more, and then we can change the height of it. Maybe I want it a little bit taller or a little bit not as tall, so I can put in 400 right here, and I think that's looking really great, but maybe this is a little bit too bright for me maybe I want to change it so let's go to style and let's go to CSS filters and we can make it all the way black and white or we can make it have like really vibrant colors I want to make it a little more desaturated all right next if we look at our website we're gonna see that there's space on the left and on the bottom here I want it to be completely flush so what I can do is I can click on the entire section here and then under layout where it says content width, I want it to be full width. And then I wanna go here to this column and then go to advanced and I wanna make sure it all has zeros in it. So zero margin and zero for the padding. And now when we look at it, it's gonna make sure that there's no space and it's gonna be completely flush. So I think that's great. All right, so we're all done with that. Let's go back to our sheet and let's mark that off. And next, let's learn how to undo and redo. So let's go back to Elementor. And first, let's make sure we save our changes by pressing on update. But let's say we mess up our website. So we get rid of maps and we get rid of this section and we mess this up. What we can do is we can go down here to history and we can move back and forward into time. So we can get rid of that and 
re-add that and re-put in that and we can start back from the beginning. So that's how you undo and redo all of your changes. All right, so don't ever be afraid to make changes. You can always click on this history right here and go back and forward into time. All right, but we're gonna click back on settings and we can go to our sheet and we can mark that off. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our contact form. So we can see right here that if we scroll up and we click on this contact form, it really is just a short code. So this code enters in this contact form right here and we can't edit it directly from this page. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we're all updated by clicking on update, and then we can go into the back end by going to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP admin. And then what we wanna do is we wanna click over here to WP forms, and we can see that this short code corresponds with this contact form. And this was the short code that was inside Elementor. So if you wanted a new form, all you have to do is press add new, and then you'd copy that new short code into your website. And you can display the contact form wherever you want. To edit the contact form, all you have to do is click on contact form. And I'm gonna open up a new tab to show you the contact form page. And if we scroll down, we can see your name, email address, and message. And that's the same thing as your name, email address, message. So anything that we change here is gonna change right here. So let's make a quick change real quick. Let's just do a drop down right under email address and let's press save. Once we do that, we can go here and we can press refresh and we can see we have a new drop down. So that's how you edit all of the different fields. So we can go back up and you can change any of the fields by clicking on them and then you can edit all the choices right here. So you can add so many different types and customize it just the way that you want. We can also go to settings and then we can go to notifications and then we can scroll down and this is basically like another short code that inserts your admin email. If you want to send the user's message to a different email, you would just type it in right here. So you could just type in your email address and everything else you can leave the same. And again, this is where you're gonna receive all of the emails from the form. And if we scroll down where it says all fields, all of the fields that the user fills out are gonna be sent to your email. So that's what this means. All right, so we can save that and we can go to our contact form and we can refresh. And this would be your user filling it out. So let's just put Michael and hey at michael.com and whatever choice they have and say, hey, it's me. And then they can send it. And this is gonna get sent to your email. And then it says, thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. And if we go back and go to confirmations, we can see that we can change that here if we want to. So we can see this new email in our email inbox and it puts all of the fields in it. And that's super cool because your customers can contact you. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna revert back because I don't wanna show that field. So I'm gonna remove this drop down and just put it in the trash, press okay and save it. And now when we go back to the contact page and we refresh and we scroll down, we can see that that is deleted. All right, so now we learn how to edit the entire contact page and the contact page form. So now we can go to our sheets and we can check that off. The next thing that we're gonna do is make sure our contact page is mobile friendly. All right, so we can exit out of here and we can go back to our contact page. So let's just click edit with Elementor. And then we can go down here and click on the responsive mode and let's click on tablet. All right, now we're gonna change the height of this. So just click on the entire section and we wanna make it just like our homepage. So let's make it a minimum height of 400. And then the spacing, the same as our homepage. So let's go to advanced and go to padding top 50 and padding bottom 30. And then let's make this heading bigger. So let's select it and then go to style and typography and let's make this 60. That's looking perfect. Now let's see if everything else looks good on tablet. It does, so let's move on to our mobile. Again, let's change the size of this right here. So click on the entire section and then under layout, we're gonna change the minimum height to 350. And then we're gonna go to advanced and we're gonna change the padding to 40 and the bottom to 24 and that looks really good and it looks exactly the same as our home page now let's make this heading smaller so let's click on it and go to style and typography and let's make this 36 all right let's check the rest and we are all done making it mobile friendly all right so let's update that and let's go to our sheet and let's mark it off and it's time to move on to our about page 
So let's click on the Elementor tab and let's just go to our homepage. And now we can click on our About page. And on this About page, we're gonna learn all of this. So let's do the first thing. We're gonna copy another section from another page. All right, so let's just click on About Us again. And we can click on Edit with Elementor. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the header image from the contact page and we're gonna insert it in right here. So we have to open up a new tab and go to our contact page. And we can click on edit with Elementor for our contact page. And we can hover over this section and then just right click and press copy. Then we can go back to our about us page and scroll all the way down to where it says plus and then right click and press paste. That's gonna paste in that contact page, hero header. And all you have to do is click hold and drag and we're gonna drag this to the top. Once we do that, we can exit out of this one right here. And then we can change this to about us by just putting in about and we're also gonna change this image. And we can do that by clicking on this entire section and then going to style. And then clicking on the image and uploading files and selecting files and find the folder that says about page and click on it and we can open it. Then we can insert media and that will change the image. All right, so our hero header image is done in just a couple of clicks. So let's go up here and let's mark it off. And let's next add some motion effects to our text. So we can go back here and we can exit out of this. And we're gonna have this text slide in from the left and slide in from our right. But first, let's remove this button because we're not gonna need it. So just right click here and press delete. And then we wanna click on this text here and then go to advance. And then under motion effects, we have all of these really cool motion effects. And we can choose any of them like fade down or fade up or fade to the right. We want to choose slide in from the left. So it slides in from the left and then we're going to make that duration fast. So it does it quickly. And this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to advanced in motion effects and we're going to go up here and we're going to make sure it slides in from the right. And we're also going to make that fast. We're also going to delay it a little bit. So we're going to delay it half a second, which is 500 milliseconds. So this one will go first and then this one will go next. All right. So that's looking awesome. We can scroll down and see what else we want to change. And maybe we want to change this. Maybe we want to change these columns. It's super easy. All we'd have to do is click hold and drag to rearrange and change them just like that. All right, so let's see what we've learned. So we can go back to our sheet and we learned about motion effects and we also learned how to swap columns around. So let's go back to Elementor. Let's see what else we might wanna change to this page. I don't like this bottom section, so I'm gonna remove it. And maybe I wanna add a different section here. So let's click on the S and let's go to blocks this time instead of pages. And we can insert any of these blocks here into our website in just one click. Maybe I want an FAQ block. So go to FAQ and we can search for one that we like. And I really like this one, so I'm gonna click on it. And then just press import block. And that's gonna import this FAQ block right into our page and we can click on any of it and we can edit it right here. It's beautiful and it's already designed and made responsive. So it's gonna look great on all devices. And now if you remember from our home page, we also saved a testimonials section and we wanna insert it in right here. So just click on this folder and we can go to my templates and we see that this testimonial is saved and we can just insert it like that and press yes. And now that testimonials is gonna be inserted right into our website. All right, so we're gonna scroll down and I actually want this testimonials above the FAQ. So I'm just gonna click hold and drag and let it go. And now I think that's a much better order. And I'm really liking how this about page looks. So let's see what we learned. So we learned how to insert a previously saved element, which was our testimonial section. And we also learned how to import a new block, which was the FAQ block. Next, we're gonna see if this about page is mobile friendly. So let's check that out. Let's click on Elementor and let's see our responsiveness by clicking on responsive mode. And we can go to tablet. And because we copied this section, it's already responsive and the tablet is looking really, really good. And we could go to mobile and the mobile also is looking really good and there's no changes that we need to make. All right, so let's just click on update to update all of our changes and let's preview our changes to see what they look like. And we can see that animation right there, which is looking cool. 
and our about page is looking great. So now we can go to our sheets and we can mark that off. All right, next we can close out all of those tabs and go back to our homepage. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our shop page. Our shop page is the one that we named store up here. And this page is different than our other pages and we can't edit it in the same way as our other pages because it's set by WooCommerce. So because this is a special page set by WooCommerce, we can't edit it in Elementor. So let's see how to control it. So first I wanna show you how this page is set up inside of WooCommerce. So let's go to our dashboard and then we can go to WooCommerce and then settings and we can go to our products. And then we can see that this shop page is a page that is named shop and it's set right here. We can actually set our shop page to any page that we want, but obviously we want to keep it as the shop page. Besides the shop page, there are also two other pages that are handled by WooCommerce, and we can see that by clicking on advanced. And we can see that it's the cart page, and that's a page named cart, and the checkout page, which is a page named checkout. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these pages by clicking on pages. And we can see all three of the pages. We can see the cart page, the checkout page, and the shop page right here. So we're gonna open up the cart page in a new tab by just right-clicking on the view and open link in new tab. And then we're just gonna view the checkout page. So just view this page. And we see that we're not actually on the checkout page and that's because nothing is added to our cart. So let's just return to shop and let's click on a product and let's add to cart. Now we can go up here and we can actually visit our checkout page by clicking on checkout. And now we can see this checkout page and we can also see this cart page. This cart page, if we refresh it, we can see all of the products in our cart. And then once we proceed to checkout, it goes to this checkout page right here. But we can see that there's a problem on both the cart page and the checkout page. On both of these pages, it says cart-2. And on the checkout page, it says checkout-2. We only want it to say cart, and we only want it to say checkout. So all we have to do is click on edit page for both of them. So just click on edit page, and also click on edit page. And what we can do is we can edit this URL slug under permalinks, and just remove the dash 2. Once we do that, we can update, and then we can go to the other page and remove the dash 2, and press update. All right, so let's check out those changes that we made and let's go to our main website and let's go up here and let's see if the links have updated and they have not. And what we can do is we can go to our store and we can add another product because that will refresh our site. So let's just click on another product. Let's add another product. Now, if we view our cart, it's working. So we see it's our website.com forward slash cart instead of cart dash two. And then if we go to proceed to checkout, it goes to checkout and everything is working perfectly. So let's go back to our WooCommerce settings by clicking on our dashboard and then going to WooCommerce and then going to settings. And now we can click on products. And I just wanted to show you that you can change most of your e-commerce settings here, like under weight unit, you can change that to pounds or under dimension unit, you can change that to inches. Then we can click save changes. And next, I want to show you how to change your currency so you can go to general and we can add all of our store address, zip code. We can also change where we sell to and which countries and super important, we can change our currency. So I'm in the United States, so I'm going to leave this as is, but you can change it to anything that you want. So if we scroll up, we can see all other WooCommerce settings up here. And this is how you control your WooCommerce settings for your entire store. Next, we're going to learn how to design and control what the shop page looks like. So let's click on pages and we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to shop and we're just going to right click and we're going to open up in a new tab. Then we can go up here and we can see we have the same problem as last time. We have our website.com forward slash shop dash two when it really should say our website.com forward slash shop. So the way that we can change that is we can go back to our pages and we can click on shop. Where it says URL slug over here, we just want to delete the dash two and we want to press update. So we can exit out of here now and now we can go back to our website and we can click on our store again and we can see that the URL works but the shop doesn't actually work. We can change this by once again adding another product to our shop. So we can go to the plants category and we can click on any image and let's add it to our cart and that's gonna refresh our products. 
So now when we go to our store, all right, and that did work, that refresh our shop. Sometimes it won't work for you though, so you have to go to your dashboard. And then you scroll down and go to settings and permalinks, and you scroll down and click save changes, and that's gonna refresh all of your links. So now let's go check out our store one more time, and click on store, and your store should look exactly like this now. So next, we're gonna learn how to design this page. This page also shares the same design as the product category pages. So this page will have the same design as this page, and it'll also have the same design as this page. In order to change it, all we have to do is go back into the dashboard, and then scroll down and go to Appearance and Customize. And then we can click on WooCommerce and we can click on product catalog. Now it's gonna open up that page for us and we have all the settings over here. For example, for our shop columns, we can add only two columns and that will change it for both this page and the product category page. We can also add six columns to it if we want, if we have a ton of products, but I like it three. And we can also change how many products per page. So maybe we want six products per page. And if we scroll down here, we can see that we have two pages of six products each. Again, I'm just gonna keep it as 12. And finally, we can change all of these elements right here by scrolling down a little bit and we can click and hide any of them. So let's say we don't wanna show category and we don't wanna show ratings and that will remove it right here. Maybe we do wanna show the description for it, and maybe we also wanna show add a cart button. Now, I don't really like that that much, so I'm just gonna keep it as default by hiding those. And we also can click, hold, and drag any of these around, so I wanna put the price above the title, and we can have that effect right there. But again, I liked it how it was, so I'm just gonna change that back and re-add the category and the ratings. The other change that I wanna make is to scroll up and we're gonna sort the page instead of default sorting, we're gonna sort the page by most recent. And this is gonna make it so by default, our newest products are gonna show up right here at the top. All right, let me show you one more thing. We can go back and we can go to product images to change how these images look. What I wanna do is make this image higher resolution. So I'm gonna change the thumbnail width to 600 and that's gonna make the thumbnails look much better. You can't really see the change right now, but on higher resolution devices like larger screens, it's gonna look much better. We can also scroll down. In here, we can change the shape of our images. So right now they're square, they're one by one, but we can go to custom. And now this changed to four by three, but we can also change it to two by three aspect ratio. And maybe if you have something like really long images, this might be a really good option for you but I really like one by one, so I'm just gonna click on that and keep this as default. So let's publish these changes, and we also wanna make sure that our page looks good on tablet and mobile, so just click on this button right here, and we can see that it looks pretty good, except for we have this gray background, it's kinda hard to see, and we just want it to be all white. We want it to be white here and white here. So the way that we can change that is we can go over here and we can press back, and we can press back again. And we wanna go into global right here and then click on colors. So next we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to content background and click on it and scroll down again and we're gonna make sure this is white. So we just click, hold and drag all the way to the top corner and now it's white. And we also wanna make sure that it works great on mobile. So we click on the mobile icon and we can scroll down on mobile also and we can see, or maybe you can't see, but it's a very, very light gray and it's white right here. And that was the same as the tablet. It was really light gray and white. So you might not be able to see this on the video, but we can definitely see it in real life. So we wanna just click, hold and drag and make it all the way white. Now it's white here and white here. All right, so that looks perfect. Let's go ahead and publish those changes by clicking on publish. All right, so now our shop page looks really great on desktop, tablet, and mobile, so we can exit out of there. And the next thing that we're gonna learn is how to add and edit products. The first thing that I wanna show you is the product category. So just hover over products and go to categories. And now we can see all of the product categories on our website. So we have a cactus category and a plants category. If for example, you had a t-shirt business, you'd maybe have a men's category and a woman's category. So we can easily add and delete categories here. To delete a category, all you'd have to do is hover over the category and press delete, but I'm gonna cancel that out. And that would delete your category to 
add a category, you just go over here and you can add a category. I'm just gonna add in succulents and we don't need to do anything else. All we need to do is click add new category. And we can see if we scroll up here, we have a new succulents category. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add products to our website. So all you have to do is go over to this all products and click on it. And we can see all of our different products on our website. If we scroll up, we can add a new product by just clicking on add new. And we can type in the product name right here. I'm just gonna paste in a product name. And we can also put in a product description. So I'm just gonna put in a product description. And there are actually two different product descriptions, a short product description and a long product description. So this is the short product description. This is gonna show up right beside our product. And this is the long product description. This is gonna show up underneath if the user wants more information. So we're just gonna add short to this and I'm gonna paste it in there so you can see which one is short and I'm just gonna add long to this to show you where this shows up as the long description. It'll make more sense in a second. Next, if we scroll down, we can start adding prices and other options right here. So we wanna add a price. We're gonna put in 154 and right here, you can add a sales price. You don't have to, but if we add a price here, it's gonna show up as on sale. So we can put the sale as 145 to give a little bit of a discount. And next we see these two different options, virtual and downloadable. We're not really gonna go over them too much, but a virtual product is something like if you're selling something that didn't need to be shipped and it was intangible, for example, like a coaching lesson for $99 you would check off virtual. For downloadable, it's a little bit different where let's say you're a fitness trainer and you're selling a PDF. Once your customer bought the PDF, they can automatically download it and it'll get sent to their email. All right, for us, we're just keeping it really simple. There are tons and tons of options that you can do here and you can make your shop any way that you want, but we just have a really simple product and we're also gonna add it to the category as a succulent. So this is gonna show up in the succulents category. And finally, the most important thing is our product images. So if we scroll all the way down, we can add a main image right here and we can set product image. So now we can upload our files. So I'm just gonna click on upload files and select files. And in the downloadable zip in the description below, you can download all these images, but we're gonna click the first one and then we're gonna hold shift and we're gonna click the second one and that will allow you to select both of them. Then we're gonna press open and it's gonna upload both of those files. So we're gonna set this one as the main one. So just click on that and we're gonna set product image. Then we can scroll down and the next thing that we can do is add different images as the product gallery images. So we can just go ahead and add them and I'm gonna add that other one right here. And then I'm gonna add a few more by scrolling down and holding control if you're on a PC or command if you're on a Mac and just click and that will select an additional one and then still hold control or command and click and that will select all three and then we can add to gallery. All right, once we've added it, we can update this by clicking on publish and then let's open it up in a new tab by right clicking and open link in new tab. And now we can visit our product and we see that it's on sale from 155 to 145. We see the name, we see the category that it's in. We see that we can add it to the cart. We can hover over it and zoom in and we have all of our product gallery images right here and it's looking awesome. It's also up here showing the sale badge because we have it as a discounted product. And this is where our short description shows up. And if we scroll down here, this is where our long description shows up. So if you wanted to give additional details, you can add it here and this would just be a summary of it. If we wanted to delete any of these images here or rearrange them, we can easily do that. So we can just go back to our edit product page and we can scroll down and let's say we wanted to rearrange it. Maybe we wanted this one first. Then we can scroll back up and we can update that. And now we can refresh our site right here. And now we can see that that one appears first. But let's say that we didn't want these two images here. We can easily delete them by going back, scrolling down and let's delete those two. So let's delete this one and this one. 
And now when we update, those will be deleted. So we can just click on refresh. And now we can see that that's deleted. And this is looking really good. We can zoom up and we can see that we added a product to our website. Now, if we scroll down, we can see these reviews. So we can click on them and let's review our product. Let's give it five stars and say, amazing plant. We can submit our review. And now we have this plant as a five star rating. We can also open up the store and because we sorted by latest, we can see this latest product right here and we can see the review right here. All right, so now let's visit our homepage by clicking on our logo and let's scroll down and we don't see our product here and that's because it's not yet a featured product. We can easily make it a featured product by going back to our website and clicking on all products. And all you have to do is click on the star to make it a featured product. Once we do that, we can go back to our main website and click on refresh. And now that's going to show up on our homepage as a featured product. All right, so let's go ahead and check out our deals page. Let's see if it updated there. It is on sale, so it should show up and we can see it right here. So it's updating in multiple places, which makes your life much easier. So there's one thing left to do. If we go up to our menu, we don't see the succulent category right here. We can easily add that by going to our dashboard and then scrolling down and going to appearance then menus. We wanna make sure under screen options up here that product categories is selected, which it is. Then we can scroll down and under product categories, we wanna add succulents. So we wanna add it and add it to the menu. Then we wanna click, hold and drag right under cactus and we can open that up and we can capitalize it. Once we do that, we can save menu and we can go back to our website and visit our site. We can exit out of here and we can hover over our menu and we can go to succulents, it's right in there. We can click on it. And we only have one product in there, but it's looking pretty good. The last thing that I wanna show you is how to remove products from our store. So all we have to do is go into the dashboard and we can go to products. And then to delete anything, all we have to do is hover over any of the products and we can click on trash. If we wanna delete multiple products, all we have to do is mark them off right here. And we can go up and under bulk actions, we can move to trash and apply. So that's how we can delete any of the products that we want. And the last thing that I wanna show you is how to moderate those reviews that you got on your website. So what we can do is click on comments and we can see that review that I left and we can move it to trash. We can unapprove it so that it won't show up or we can reply to it. I'm gonna to reply to it and I'm just gonna say thanks. Click reply and now that reply will be on the website. So let's go ahead and check that out by clicking on this date over here. And now we can see that right on our website. Amazing plant, thanks right on our product. And now I think it's time for the big moment. Let's try to make our first store order. So let's add this to cart and we can view our cart and we can see we have all of these in our cart. So we wanna to proceed to checkout. And if we scroll down, we can see that we can't actually make a payment yet. And that's because our shipping and our payment methods are not set up yet. So let's see how we can configure that. All right, so let's go back to our dashboard and let's open up WooCommerce and then settings. And then let's check out the shipping tab right here. And we're gonna add a shipping zone and click it. And for the zone name, you can put anything that you want. I'm just gonna put USA. And for the regions, this is where you'd wanna ship. So we could start typing in California. Or if you want, you can just start typing in all of United States. So this would allow us to ship to everywhere in the United States and we can add more or subtract more as needed. All right, and below here, we can add multiple shipping methods, but we're only gonna add one. So everyone in this region in the United States will be able to see this shipping method that we add. So let's add a shipping method. So here we can choose between flat rate or free shipping or even local pickup. We're just gonna offer a simple flat rate shipping and we're gonna click on add shipping method. Once we do that, we can edit it by clicking on 
edit. All right, so for here, we can make it taxable or non-taxable. I'm just gonna make it non-taxable. And for the cost, we can just put something like $7 for the flat rate shipping. And so what this means is that everyone in the United States will be able to have this shipped to them for a flat rate of $7. All right, we can also have rules. If we hover over this question mark, we could put something in here like $7 times the quantity QTY. And what that will do is however many products we have in there will be multiplied by $7. And you can check out how to do that by hovering over this question mark. So if we had two products in our cart, then shipping would cost $14 for your user. We could also do something like shipping fee as percent of the total order. And we can see how to do this by hovering over this question mark. But I'm just gonna leave it $7 flat rate and save changes. All right, so we're charging $7 to ship anywhere in the United States, and that's all set up. And the next thing that we wanna do is set up our payment methods. So just click on payments up here. And now we can see we have these different payments. So we can enable or disable direct bank transfer. We can enable check payments or cash on delivery just by clicking on this right here. But what you probably wanna do is you wanna take credit cards on your website, and that's the beauty of having plugins. We can easily get a plugin and be able to take credit cards on our website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and scroll down and go to plugins and click add new. And what we wanna do is we wanna search for Stripe because that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use Stripe, S-T-R-I-P-E. And we're using Stripe over PayPal because Stripe is much better. The PayPal plugin was recently updated and it's absolutely garbage. And we can see right here that the Stripe payment only has three out of five stars, but it's so much better than PayPal. So we're gonna install that now and I'm gonna show you why it only has three out of five stars and we're gonna fix it. So just click install now. And by the way, PayPal only has one star and that's why we're gonna activate Stripe. Once we do that, we can go back to WooCommerce and we can go to settings. And then we can go back to payments. And now because of that plugin and the beauty of WordPress, we're gonna have all those Stripe payments available. But we only wanna focus on this one, the simple one. And so we're gonna enable that. And then we're gonna set it up. So just click on setup. And if we scroll down, we wanna make sure that test mode is enabled so we can test our shop before we do anything. And it's asking for these two keys, the test key and the secret key. In order to get those, we have to go to stripe.com. So just open up a new tab and go to stripe.com, S-T-R-I-P-E dot C-O-M and press enter. Then you wanna sign in. You might have to create an account, but I'm not gonna show you how to create an account because it's super easy. You guys know how to create accounts. And I'm just gonna log in right here. And creating an account is super fast. It only takes two minutes and you don't have to do anything else. And then you can also connect that to your bank account and send that money directly to your bank. So now we wanna enable test mode. So just click on this test mode up here to enable it. And then we see this publishable key and we just wanna click and copy it. And then we wanna go over to our WooCommerce and paste it here. And then we wanna get our secret key. So just click on this and press copy. And we wanna go over here and press paste. Now that we have both of that, we wanna scroll down and press save changes. So now let's go check out our store. So let's go and visit our site and let's click on our store and let's click on a product. And now we can see this huge buy with Google Pay button. And this is probably why they got only three out of five stars because this is just terrible. So we can add this to cart and then view our cart and we can scroll down. And again, we see this really ugly button. We'll show you how to delete that in a second and we can proceed to check out. All right, next we can scroll down and we can put in a test credit card. So I'm just gonna speed this up, but I'm gonna fill out all this information and we're gonna place an order. So here your user could add in optional notes and that will get sent to your email. And now we're gonna put in the test credit card information. So we're just testing your website to see if everything works. So just paste that number in there and then put an expiration date, but put it after today's date. And then we could just put in a random CVC numbers right here. All right, and we're gonna put in just a test note just to show you what this does. And now we can scroll down and we can place our order. 
All right, so our test order was successful, but this is what it's really gonna look like when your customer really makes an order. So you're gonna get an email as a store owner, and the customer is also gonna get an email confirming their order. And your customer is gonna be able to scroll down and see all of the products that they have and the total and where it's shipping to. And we can see the $7 shipping fee here as well. So this is the email that the customer is going to receive, something that looks like this. And this is what your email is gonna look like as the store owner. So it's gonna say new order, and it's gonna tell you where to ship it. And it also has the test note in here. So that's how you create a test payment on your website so you can test out to see if your website is working properly. So now we're gonna configure a couple of settings to make our Stripe integration and experience much better for the user. So we're gonna go into the back end, and then we're gonna go back to WooCommerce and settings. Then we're gonna click on payments, and then we're gonna scroll down and click on manage where Stripe is. All right, so let's just go up here and right click and let's open a link in a new tab and let's go to our checkout to see what it looks like. And right now we don't have any items in our cart and that's because we just made an order and it cleared all of those. So we can just click on plants and let's add something. And we're gonna add this to cart. We're gonna get rid of this really quickly and let's view cart and let's proceed to checkout. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this button. So we can go up here and we can scroll down until it says enable payment request buttons and we're going to uncheck that and that's going to disable all of those google pay buttons from everywhere on the website so let's click on save changes and let's refresh this page to make sure this button goes away all right perfect now if we scroll down we also want to get rid of this save payment information and we want to make this look much better so what we can do is we can go over here and again, we can scroll down and where it says enable payments on saved cards, we can uncheck that. And then we're gonna try the new payment experience to make it look much better. And then we're gonna save changes. And now when we look at our checkout and refresh, it's gonna look much better over here. And that looks much cleaner and much more modern. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this test mode so that people can put in their real credit cards and actually give you a payment. So if we go over here to settings and we scroll down here, we're gonna disable enable test mode. And now it's asking for our real live key and our real secret key. So we can go back to Stripe and we can disable test mode and we can copy our live key by just clicking on it and going over here and pasting it. And then we could go back to Stripe and click and copy our secret key and then going over here and pasting it. Then we can scroll down and click save changes and we can go up here to check out and we can refresh this page. And now it's gonna work with a real credit card. And we know your website works perfect because we use that test mode in order to test it properly. So now if anyone enters in their credit card and places an order, it's actually gonna get sent to your Stripe account. And from there, you can send that to your bank account. So now you can accept credit cards on your website. There's one more change that we may wanna do, and that's this text right here. So we can change that by going back to our dashboard and then going and scrolling down and going to appearance and customize. And then we can go to WooCommerce and then we can go to checkout. And if we scroll down, this is the text that shows up right here. And we can change any of this text. And we're just gonna paste in right here, secure payment, processed by Stripe. This is gonna give the user more peace of mind that your credit card is secure and it's being processed by a real company with a super good reputation. All right, so let's remove the text right here and make it much cleaner. And now it looks amazing. So we can publish those changes and we can exit out of there. So let's take one last look at the checkout. So let's refresh this so we can see our changes. And this would be our final version, and I think it looks perfect. All right, so now we can exit out of Stripe. And the next thing that we're gonna do is manage our orders. So let's exit out of here. And to manage our orders, all we have to do is go over to WooCommerce and click on orders. We can see that we have one new order here, and that was from our test order, and we can just click on it. So right now, we can see that the status is processing. If we want a quick overview of it, we can click on this I, and this will show us some details like where to ship it and what they bought. Once we do ship it, we can click on this completed and that will complete the order. Another way to do that is we can exit out of here. We can click on this order link right here 
and that will give us a more in-depth summary of everything. And again, once we have completed that order, once we have shipped it out, we can click on this and we can press completed. Sometimes we need to cancel the order or refund the order so we can click these and also do that from the same place. But right now we're gonna complete this order. And once we do that, we can click on update and now an email will be sent to the user that that order is being shipped. We can also go back to our orders page right here and we can see that the order status has been completed. And if you have a whole bunch of orders, they'll all show up here and you can mark them all off as complete by just clicking on each of them and then going to the bulk actions and then change status to completed. And then everyone will get an email saying that their order is completed and has been shipped. All right, but how do we get more orders I think we can go over here to coupons and let's create a new coupon. And all we have to do is click on add coupon right here. And let's say we wanna add a 10% coupon. So we're just gonna type in 10 off with no spaces and we can write anything here as long as it's one word. And then we can go down here and we can change it to discount type. And we're gonna give it a percentage discount and we're gonna put in 10 for 10% off. If we wanna allow free shipping or change the discount, we can do that. We can also put in an expiration date, but we're not gonna do that. So we're gonna click publish. And now let's go back to our cart by visiting our site and going to our cart and viewing our cart. And now you can give that discount to anyone on social media or through email or anywhere else. And we could put in 10 off right here and apply the coupon. And we can see the discount right here. But where else besides social media could we advertise this new offer? Let's say we wanna show it to all website visitors. And to do that, all we have to do is go to our dashboard, then go to appearance and customize. And then under WooCommerce, we can go to store notice. And then we can enable our store notice right here. And then we can change this text and we can paste in something here like limited time offer, get 10% off all items with code 10 off. Then we're gonna click on publish and let's open up a new tab and let's check out what that looks like. Then your user can read it and get 10% off, then dismiss it and it won't show again. So for example, we go to about, that won't show up again. And I think that's a super cool way to alert all of your users to a sale. All right, let's say our sale is over though. So we wanna go back to our customizer and disable the store notice and publish our changes and that made everything back to normal. All right, so we can exit out of there. So let's say that you had your website for a little while and you're getting a whole bunch of sales. How do we get some insight within those sales? What we have to do is we have to check out the analytics. So we have to go into our back end of our website and then we can click on analytics. And now your website is probably gonna look like this with zero sales right now but let's say it's been a few months and you're getting some sales. So what we can do is we can go ahead and check out a date range by clicking on this date range and we can go to custom. We wanna select a date range for last month and we can just do the entire month by clicking on the first and the 31st. Then we can scroll down and we can actually compare this to the previous period. So this is gonna compare it to the month before that and we can click on update. And now it's gonna show us all of our sales for the month of October. And we can actually see the increase from the previous month. And we can go down here and we can see that the blue line is October and the green line is September. And this is how many sales we're getting and this is the amount of orders we're getting. Right here, we can see if we're on the right track, if these numbers are going up. So 4,600 one month, and 7,500 the next month, or 45 sales one month and 69 sales the other month. So now we know we're doing really good. We can also check on different products and see how they're doing by clicking on products. And here we can see the items sold and we're up 54% from the previous month. And we can scroll down and we can see right here all of the items that sold. So these sold the most, so we might wanna order a whole bunch of these. And if we go all the way down here, these sold the least, so maybe we wouldn't order as many of these. This way you can get all of the data for your store and you can keep on doing better and better and better because you have that information of what sells and what doesn't. Next, we can look up 
the orders tab. So just click on it. And here we can see the average order value. This is super helpful to know how much we can spend on marketing. For example, you or a digital ad agency might want to know how much an average order is in order to know how much they can spend on an ad and what makes it profitable for you. The last thing that we want to check is the categories performance. So we can click on categories and we can scroll down and we see which categories are doing the best. Succulents are not doing that great, but cactus is doing really great. So maybe we wanna add more cactus to our website. And this is gonna help us be smarter about the products that we hold in our store so that we can make more and more sales over time. So there's one more step for this tutorial and that is logging out. So all we have to do is we can go and click on our website and this is completely optional. You don't have to log out, but we can view your website as your user would view it by just hovering over your name and pressing on log out. Then we can go to the front end of our website by removing all of this. So now we've removed that black bar at the top so you're not logged in anymore and you're viewing the website just as your user would view it. So we've created this website step-by-step -step with no steps skipped and it's absolutely beautiful. You guys should be super proud. We probably put in 300 to 400 hours of work into creating this tutorial for you guys. If you do make an online store using our guide, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. We'd love to check it out. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much.